there's a whole new genre in historical crime fiction using real historical people as the investigators. There's a series of books in which Jane Austen, uh, Charles Dickens, Theodore Roosevelt, Bertie the Prince of Wales are the investigators. And there's a series in which Dr. Samuel Johnson is the investigator. Now, I've always thought there's this really close parallel between Johnson and Lewis, both great writers, both devout Christians, both literary critics, and both really clubbable that had friends around them all the time. And I thought, well, if Johnson could be a character like that, so can Lewis. And hence the series was born. I discovered C.S. Lewis when I was 17. The age of 17, a fairly new Christian. I read Screwtape Letters and loved it. Then I read Mere Christianity and Miracles, and I thought, this is wonderful. What this tells me is, being a Christian, you don't have to turn off your brain. You can think logically, you, think, you can think rationally. And Lewis became enormously important to me then. And the way Lewis combines logic and reason with imagination, for example, in the Narnia stories or the science fiction novels, is just wonderful. So I've been a Lewis fan since I was 17. And that was at least two or three years ago. So I, I have been, I've been reading him and thinking about Lewis for a long time. And I've read a lot of books about Lewis. The best of them is a book called Jack by George Sayer. He knew him really well. He, he was, he's more than just a good writer. He was also a really interesting person. As a younger man, they describe him as being hearty uh, and jovial and clubbable and very good at friendships. I think he was a fascinating person. Lewis is too big to fit into one book, and in order to develop, develop, present Lewis as a character in that sense, uh, what I wanted to do was to run him through a series of books, so I invented a fictional narrator, called him Tom Morris, who was a former student of Lewis's, and I've become really interested in Morris, and his voice, and the way he tells stories, and how involved he gets, and, and Morris, my central character, has an ambition to become a novelist. So that becomes the thread that connects book to book to book, mm -hmm. and he, he start, becomes a school teacher and then becomes a journalist, and he will eventually become a novelist if the series keeps going, which is why you need to buy not one copy but ten and give one to all your friends. My narrator, Tom Morris, although he's been a student of Lewis's, and they're, they're good friends, they like each other, Morris is not a Christian. Uh, so consequently, he has, co he has constant challenges for for Lewis. He wants, he wants Jack to respond to his questions because Morris, in fact, is, is a troubled soul who would really like Christianity to be, to be true, but he could see all the problems, all the problems that fill the 21st century world he's aware of. So he's constantly throwing those at Jack in the midst of whatever is going on in their lives. Uh, it's, it's Morris's inner turmoil which drives that argument of how do we find out if this is true or not? How does this fit in with the world we're experiencing? And all these awful things that are happening in this story. That's how it connects together. Professionally, I'm a journalist. So professionally, I'm closer to G.K. Chesterton than I am to C.S. Lewis. But being a journalist is very good because it teaches you to write not because you're inspired, but because it's nine o'clock. Uh, and so journalists tend to be fairly fluent and to write quickly, which I do. The result is I'm up to 50 odd books, uh, children's books, crime novels, books about words and language. Uh, that's what I do. I'm, I, I write because I love the words and I love the language and I love to tell stories. Two things. They can expect good stories because I, I cook up fiendishly impossible plot, plots, which will keep you turning the pages. You know, that couldn't have happened. How could that person be killed like that? Inside a locked room with, you know, with no weapons inside. What happened? That will keep you turning the pages. But as well as that, in every book, you will learn something about defending the Christian faith. What are the arguments in favor of the way Christianity sees the world? Christianity is constantly being rejected or uh, argued against these days. And so we need to know there are arguments that respond to that, and those arguments are in the book woven through that plot. The, the crime novel part is not research, it's invented out of a distorted imagination. The arguments uh, saying, look, Christianity is reasonable, Christianity makes sense, Christianity, that comes out of my background, my undergraduate degree in philosophy, my master's degree in philosophy. So it's partly my reading in Lewis and learning how he argues, not exactly his arguments, but the style in which he argues. And also in my master's degree, I did the thesis critiquing Dawkins, for example. So it's, it's having that background and saying, here's how you can, you can find arguments and intelligent ways of saying, it's all true. 
Uh, I touch type quite quickly, full of errors, but I have spell check, and that fixes it all up. Without that, I wouldn't have written a book. The next one in this series, there is a student found dead inside a locked room. Windows and doors locked, and the keys are missing, and this student has been beheaded, and the head is also missing. So that's, that's a great plot. I really like these sort of things. My pleasure. Anytime. You turn on the coffee, I'll come back anytime.